Is this the inflection point for the fall inventory that we've been waiting for? What does this mean for the spring market? And let's talk about the American dream being dead. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We'll also do an interest rate update, as well as talk about some very relevant current events. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then know I am here to help. And by the way, if you're an investor who is looking for off-market houses, then reach out as I would love to hear what your buy boxes are. We get off-market opportunities each and every day, and I would love to play a little game of, well, matchmaking. And just as a heads up, these off-market opportunities are cash or hard money only investments. No conventional financing is allowed. So let's get into it and jump into the single family market stats. Another week and another inventory high for the year. But have we hit the peak? There are currently 4,733 single family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. This is one more unit than last week. And this means inventory is 5.9% higher than it was just 28 days ago. I feel pretty confident that this week will be the high point for our inventory levels for 2023. And if so, that would be kind of crazy. We never broke the 5,000 unit mark the entire year. And if this is the case, if inventory is done growing, then we can start to form some educated opinions of what the spring market in 2024 will look like. Now, the next question will be, how severe will the fall inventory drawdown be? We saw inventory decrease by 33% from this week in 2022 to the last week in December of 2022. That number was a 47% decrease in inventory in 2021. There's no doubt that our current market is the best buying opportunity that we've seen in all of 2023. You want the best deal on a house, then now is the time to buy. I was talking with a loan officer yesterday, and they stated that they processed nine loans last week. Not one of them, not one of them had a sales price over asking price. It's old news that we're surpassed the inventory levels of 2021, but look at how our inventory levels this year have leveled off, as where in 2021 and 2022, they were actually decreasing. We now have 684 fewer houses on the market today than we did today last year. And to put this in perspective, last week that number was 863 units. But look at this year in 2021. We now have 510 more single-family homes on the market today than we did, it, did today in 2021. And this is up for 271 units just last week. New listings did well what we thought they'd do. And that's going to be the pattern from now until the end of the year. There were 840 single family homes that came on the market this week. This week's new listing numbers were 117 units off or 12.2% off last year when we listed 957 single family homes. That was a bigger difference than I would have expected. Now the four week rolling average is 964 units. So we're gonna be behind the four week rolling average for pretty much the rest of the year. So I'm not too worried about this data point as as we move forward we had 860 homes go under agreement which was 21 and a half percent less than the same week last year when 1095 single family homes went under agreement now this was a shocking number as it broke out of that 10 to 15 percent range that we'd been seeing in the last six weeks but when i look at the data for last year i think this week was well a little bit of an outlier week where we just had an abnormal burst of uh sales activity not worried about the big decrease in under agreements yet now, the four-week rolling average is 863 units, so we were slightly below the four-week rolling average. So when compared to last week's market, new listings were off by 12%, while under agreements were off by 21%. There were 734 single-family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $789,000 and a median sales price of $620,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were down by a crazy 34% as there were 1,112 single-family homes that sold this week last year. Now, months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market, but the closer you get to zero, the stronger and more aggressive of a seller's market that it is. Now, this week, months of inventory jumped to 1.68 months from last week's 1.59 months. Now, the 1.68 months this week is compared to 1.51 months this week last year. Months of inventory continues to tick up. This is the best buying opportunity of 2023. If you want a value on a house, then between now and the end of the year is where you are going to find it. Real quick, and this is my shameless plug, I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now, on to the condo market. We have 2,612 condos on the market as of Monday. Now, inventory fell in the condo market 
slightly, but it fell. Inventory decreased by nine units with there being 4.7% more condos on the market today than 28 days ago. Even though inventory went down, it did not go down as much as it did in the prior years. The inventory gap continues to tighten. We now have only 167 fewer condos on the market today than at the same time last year. And it's even tighter when you compare it to the 2021 market. We now have only 153 fewer condos on the market than we did the same time in 2021. Just two weeks ago, that was a 416 unit difference. Just like in the single family market, what happens here in the next handful of weeks is going to start painting the picture for the condo market in 2024. There were 349 condos that came on the market with a four week rolling average of 450 condos. This was a bit of a surprise. We really fell off of last year's pace here. We listed 416 condos this week last year, so our condo new listing inventory was off by 16%. Now, under agreements were an even bigger surprise, but like the single family, this week last year just had a big bump in activity. This week, we put 320 uh, condos under agreement, which was 20.6% below last year's numbers when 403 condos went under agreement. Now, that four-week rolling average is 367 units, so 16% fewer listings that came on the market when compared to this week last year, while selling 20.6% fewer condos. There were 313 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $650,000 and a median sales price of $520,000. This same week last year, there were 462 condos that sold, so sales levels were off by an astounding 32%. Months of inventory jumped to 2.26 months from last week's 2.16 months. Any chance you can do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button right down there? Believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference to me as well as the channel as it plays with that YouTube algorithm. And while subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. Time to talk about interest rates, though. For all intents and purposes, last week was a victory. Rates moved sideways. And at this point, I'm going to take sideways. I think a very interesting point to take away is how arms are really starting to become more and more attractive. But I read a quote, the higher we go, the closer we are to the top. Pretty sure that guy could find a ray of sunshine in pitch darkness. But in this case, there might be some kernel of logic behind it. The Fed hikes short-term rates, which filter through to longer-term rates like mortgages. And we have seen our long-term rates adjust without any Fed rate manipulation. And in the past couple of weeks, the Fed has increasingly said the sharper rise in longer-term rates are evidence that they don't need to hike short-term rates anymore. They have also said that they are seeing some softening in the economy that isn't necessarily in the data numbers yet. What essentially this means is that it is extremely likely that they are going to hold tight on raising rates on Wednesday. They don't need to hike rates. The market, well, it's doing it for them. How am I reading this? Is that we are going to get some rate stability moving forward. Stability is a great thing for the marketplace. And don't be fooled into thinking that the Fed holding rates means that they're going to be lowering them anytime soon. It's not going to happen. Proof to that reason was in last week's inflation data that came in higher than expected. So the American dream of home ownership is debt. That is what I heard someone a lot smarter than me say last week at a conference. That statement, well, it really got me thinking. I think the American dream is dying. Not quite dead, but I also don't see any lifelines or rays of hope that will bring it back. I thought the higher rates would push some of these big investors out of the real estate market. And I think they've helped, but I'm beginning to realize, well, that they, they're here to stay. These big investors with an unlimited amount of funds are not leaving the real estate market anytime soon. They are still buying more carefully and at bigger discounts, but they're still out there buying. But here is what that does to the other side of the coin. It's built constant and consistent built-in demand. If the market slides a bit, then they're going to be there to buy and buy very quickly. These big and small investors have created a pricing floor for the real estate market. Now, I know this is something that the market is going to crash, hopeful, are not going to want to hear, but it's the truth. But yes, the American dream of home ownership is dying. It's being forced out and overshadowed by big and small business. Those who have already bought houses will do just fine, and they're going to be able to play the real estate game for the rest of life. But those who don't already own, it's going to become harder and harder to buy until we have a country of renters. And come on, that does make sense, right? We live in a world where people don't even own the $1,500 iPhone. The value they see is in not owning the thing, but being able to get a new one every year. 
as a population, we have been conditioned to become consumers, not savers. The dead America dream makes a lot of sense when you put it in that context. I want to talk about your personal real estate needs, whether you're looking to buy in the next nine or 90 days, then I would absolutely love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you're thinking about possibly selling, well, then we can help you traditionally or even offer you a cash offer on your house for a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what your situation, we can help you get it done. Now, you can visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com and just fill in your information and then we'll reach out to you questions or comments about any of this market data, then drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm going to take the time to respond. Until next time.